Moscow. It's the fifth race weekend of the DTM season 2014, and that means we're halfway through. And we are here at Moscow Raceway for the second time. However, last year, the layout was completely different. This year, it is longer, and that means more long straights, but also more curves. Very challenging. Here are the highlights of the weekend. Enjoy. The fifth DTM weekend of 2014 took the drivers and teams to Moscow for the second time in series history. The event kicked off on Friday in downtown Moscow with a distinct flavor of the Norris Ring street circuit. The series laid on an exhibition race in the shadow of the historic Church of St. Nicholas at the heart of the Russian metropolis. Roman Rusinov, Bernd Mylander and Jens Klingman took the wheel of DTM race cars supplied by Audi, Mercedes-Benz and BMW in a brief foretaste of the DTM action at Moscow Raceway. The series first came here in 2013, the circuit is 100 kilometers from the city center and was completed in 2012. Audi ace Mike Rockefeller recorded his second victory of the season here last year and went on to be crowned champion. He is fourth in the championship at the moment, just behind fellow Audi drivers Eduardo Mortara and also Matthias Ekstrom. The Swede took second spot when the series made its debut in Russia last year. The current championship leader is BMW driver Marco Wittmann. Approaching the halfway mark of only his second DTM season, the 24-year-old has already established an impressive 19-point cushion. The second best BMW driver is 2012 champion Bruno Spengler, all the way back in 10th. However, no one will underestimate Augusto Farfus, who finished third here last year. In terms of victories this season, Mercedes lead the way this term with two race wins. Robert Wickens produced a stunning drive at the Norris Ring to leave all his rivals trailing in his wake. The local hero, though, for the Russian crowd is Vitaly Petrov. The former F1 driver is a DTM rookie and still finding his feet in the series. He'll take us on a lap of the track. I'm Vitaly Petrov. Welcome to Moscow and now we'll do a quick lap in Moscow Raceway. First of all you need to do it a good exit of the last corner and then main straight, go to up to the top speed, fifth gear. Then first corner, fourth gear, touch the curb, touch the exit curb, then third gear, stay always inside. If otherwise you will lose the, the grip if you take one meter or left or right. Then very hard braking, second gear corner, always lock in the front right. Then actually you must stay on second gear all the time here. Stay always inside and focus on the exit of the second, second left. Maximum speed, flat out, easy flat corner. Here you have time to drink some water. <laughs> then very light braking, for the gear, very difficult corner, you don't see the apex. Then second gear, try to touch inside the curb. Then same thing, try to use entry curb. Light braking, always try to be inside, always lock in the front left, use exit curb. Now it's important left and right corner, here it's maximum attack and then you need to prepare for the long, long straight. And we need to do a perfect exit here because you can lose or win time. Also, it will be very interesting during the race. With using the race, you can pass a lot of cars. So, who buy the tickets on the last corner, you can see a lot of overtaking. So, maximum speed, six gear, very hard braking, two second gear. A touch, no, this was too much uh, curb. Actually, we use less, and, yeah, and then you do a perfect exit. This was my quick lap in Moscow Raceway. Enjoy the race. A surprise success in qualifying in Russia. BMW rookie driver Maxim Martin sets the fastest time at Moscow Raceway and claims the first ever pole position of his still young DTM career. I'm really, really happy. You can imagine for me uh, coming from where I come from, the GT and all different series, um, to be in pole for my fifth race in DTM, it's just amazing. Um, but I have to thank BMW for the car they gave me, for the team, the whole work they did. Bruno Spangler joins him on the front row of the grid and ensures that spirits at BMW are upbeat. The Canadian is finally able to make the mark he'd hoped for. In the hunt for the next podium result, the 2012 DTM champion intends to attack to the max in Moscow. 
definitely very happy. Very good day for us. Uh, the day started a bit in a difficult way in free practice this morning. We could not really find our pace, could not find a setup. Uh, but the team, you know, could find really the right way to go for qualifying and uh, give me a better car. So uh, the, the car improved a lot, you know, also through the qualifying Q1, Q2, Q3. We improved ourselves as the track came to us a little bit. So definitely happy about the final result. At Audi, a rookie driver shines too. Nico Muller shows his potential here in Eastern Europe and starts from third place. For him, the first points are within reach in his fifth DTM race. It's been a very good day for us uh, in general. Team Rosberg and Audi have provided me with a great car and to put it on the second row of the grid in P3 is a great feeling and now we hope to do the maximum out of it tomorrow. Behind the youngster, another stalwart. DTM champion and last year's winner Mike Rockenfeller will start from fourth place behind fellow Audi driver Muller, with Audi still aiming for its first win, of course, of this DTM season. Well, I think we, it was a solid qualifying. Uh, for sure, you, you want to be on pole if you are that close, and uh, therefore you could say I'm a little disappointed. But I think I tried my best. I had good laps. Uh, it was not the f like the magic lap, but it was good laps, and therefore uh, I'm happy, happy for the team. Picture postcard weather in the Moscow area. In bright sunshine, the hunt for the lap times gets underway using a much longer track configuration than the one used last year. Mercedes-Benz is having difficulties at Moscow Raceway. For four drivers, the action is already over after Q1, among them stalwart Gary Paffett and Russian local hero Vitaly Petrov. I know it's not will be easy because the track is new for me and uh, like, like I know before, it's so very difficult to drive the car. And yeah, we try a lot of different setups, but uh, I think just need more time to adapt uh, uh, my driving style to, to this uh, car and then, um, yeah, so need a little bit more time. Robert Wickens is the best place Mercedes-Benz driver in 14th position. After his success at the Norris Ring, it's back to reality again for the Canadian in Russia. The official qualifying result for the fifth DTM round at a glance then. Rookie drivers Martin and Muller spark a real surprise in Moscow. Championship leader Marco Wittmann has to make do with seventh place on the grid behind Adrian Tombe and Augusto Farfus. Set back for Eduardo Mortara. The man lying second in the driver's standing starts down in 12th place and has to hope for a race full of overtaking. Timo Scheider's qualifying performance is again disappointing. 17th place for the two-time DTM champion. Martin Tomczyk is 20th. However, due to a penalty for a collision with Gary Paffett at the Norris Ring, the BMW driver will be dropped another three places on the grid. The fifth DTM round of the season in the east of Europe. Who will lead the standings at the halfway mark of the 2014 season? 48 laps and a race distance of almost 188 kilometres calls for maximum effort from the DTM drivers. The long track layout promises plenty of overtaking manoeuvres. Fans can look forward to a thrilling race. I'm here with Robert Wickens. Let's talk about your triumph at the Norris Ring, first of all. That was absolutely amazing. You basically flew across the water. Um, it was your second victory, but however, I believe that one was really special because you didn't celebrate by yourself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, the whole race was yeah, kind of a dream, to be honest. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect going into the weekend. You know, for sure we knew we were going to be competitive, but I don't think anyone in Mercedes knew we were going to put, you know, five cars in the top six <laughs> in qualifying. And, uh, and in the race, I mean, it, w it was great. I mean, yeah, the fact that I had family there, it's the, yeah, made it ex extra special. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, it's in, it's in the past now. And uh, I'd like to get a full dry win once, because so far both my wins have come uh, on rain races that dry at the end. So, uh, but hey, I can't complain. Now, uh, after Hockenheim ring, nobody thought that Mercedes-Benz would actually still win a few races. You won two, or Mercedes-Benz won two out of four races. Um, can you explain it, or are you surprised yourself? I mean, Norris ring was special because we were fast in the dry and we were fast in the wet, but in Ostersleben, really, it was uh, some blind luck that, that with the rain and, you know, taking advantage of the strategy, you know, with, with Christian's car to, to pit for the wets and really took advantage of the you know, the, the pit stop window for, for the stop and with a lucky safety car, it put them in a position to win. Um, but also in the wet, you know, Christian was very quick. So, I mean, you can't really, you know, it's not that much luck. He, he did the job, he got it done, but for sure, uh, if it was a dry race, <laughs> we wouldn't have won the race. So at the, at the moment, we're definitely more competitive in wet conditions than we are in the dry. So now we're here in Moscow and DTM was here last year already. However, this circuit is completely different. It's longer. Um, today in the race, what can we expect uh, from you starting from P14 and Mercedes-Benz all together? Yeah, I mean, hopefully I can just get a good start. 
I mean, uh, I've had good starts in the past this year. I've actually only gained spots so far, so fingers crossed and knock on wood that <laughs> I can do it again. But, you know, in Budapest, I was close to points, finished P11, um, and I started, I think, 16th there. So, uh, you know, a good start and good strategy, some good lap times for sure. Uh, for sure, the, the goal is to try to get some points. But if, if I can score a point, two points, four points, whatever the case is, I think we would treat it like a win. Well, best of luck for the race today. Thank you. It's race day and conditions are dry and the temperature's pleasantly warm, attracting a very good crowd for the DTM's second visit to the Moscow Raceway. New to the DTM grid for season 2014 is Vitaly Petrov, the ex-Formula One star. Now the local hero will be starting from the very back of the grid in 23rd place and the Russian will of course have been hoping for a much better position in front of a huge home crowd. Gary Paffett, the best of the Mercedes drivers here last year, is also down among the backmarkers in 20th place. The 2005 DTM champion with a very disappointing qualifying performance, the only chance is to gamble so he takes the first stint on standard tyres. Paul de Resta is probably feeling similar emotions to Paffett. The 2010 DTM champion has returned from a spell in F1, but has yet to recover his DTM pace. He starts from 18th place. And here's another former champion. Timo Scheider with a less than satisfactory grid position. The 2008 and 2009 champion will start this race from 17th place on the grid. Robert Wickens has been unable to carry the momentum from his Norris Ring triumph as far as the Moscow Raceway. The Mercedes AMG C Coupe doesn't seem to be the ideal car for this configuration of the Russian track. Wickens also declines to use option tyres for the first stint. The two best place Audi drivers in the championship also start from the middle of the field. It's P12 for Eduardo Mortara. He lies second in the championship standings on 39 points. 11th on the grid for Matthias Ekstrom. He's third in the championship with 35 points. That's yet another former champion in an average starting position. By contrast, the Belgian racer Maxime Martin will start from pole. A huge surprise because it's only his fifth race in the DTM. Let's hear from him now. Congratulations, that really was a hot performance yesterday. How hot is the race going to be? And how optimistic are you to actually end up on the podium this time? Yeah, I'm really, I'm really optimistic. Um, the qualifying was really good. The race is another story, it's really long. But uh, I think I have the best place to start, so I'm really looking forward and see where we are. Well, when it comes to long races, Maxime Martin, something of an expert. Timo Glock in 10th is the best of the former Formula One drivers that line up here in Russia. Final preparations to the Deutsche Post car going on. Jamie Green in the Norris ring race to second place. And he'll start the race here at Moscow from ninth place on the grid. Starting from P8 is Miguel Molina. The Spaniard lies sixth in the Drivers' Championship currently, so this is his best DTM season to date. The championship leader, Marco Wittmann, is seventh on the grid. The youngster who's driving for Team RMG in his second DTM season is currently the man to beat. His start position here in Moscow holds out hope of a finish in the points, and that would normally be enough for him to lead the standings at the halfway stage. This is Augusto Farfus, and he'll be starting from P6. Now, the Brazilian made the podium in third place last year and after the deeply disappointing performances by the Brazil football team over the last few days, well, he'll be keen to polish up his home country's sporting image. He too will start the race on the standard tyres. It's proving to be a good season so far for Adrian Tombe. He's fifth in the standings and fifth on the grid for the race in Moscow. The Frenchman has scored points in every race this season and consistency is a vital key to success.
Mike Rockefeller, the 2013 champion and winner here at Moscow last year, will start from fourth. He's also put points on the board in all four races so far. Still waiting for his first win of 2014, though. Rocky will start at the top end of the grid on harder tyres. Hello, first of all, Mr. Gus. Now, um, BMW is right ahead of you, but behind BMW you have three Audis. So it does look pretty good for a good race for Audi, right? Yes, I think uh, I'm expecting a really exciting and very, very close race. Uh, we have three cars in the top five, as you say, so we could play a little bit with the tyre strategies and uh, I hope at the end of the day it's going to pay out. So you think you have a good strategy? Yes, I hope we have a good strategy. Um, we, are, uh, have a good in we have a good distribution in strategies between the cars, so we should in any case uh, for the race be in a very good position. Thank you, Verena. Top three. The Swiss newcomer Nico Muller springs a huge surprise with easily the best qualifying result of his debut season. Very, very few experts had been expecting this. However, it's no surprise at all to see Bruno Spengler on the front row. The 2012 champion has only scored points, though, in two races so far. And here at the Moscow Raceway, last season he came in 19th place. The biggest surprise of the lot is the man on pole. Maxime Martin posted a qualifying time 19 thousandths of a second faster than Spengler. Here in his debut season, he's beating off the competition from several former champions and a host of experienced DTM drivers. A fine performance by anybody's standards. Mr. Marquardt, we saw a fantastic qualifying yesterday. You've got BMW in P1 and P2, and also uh, you've got Wittmann in P7 and Farfus in P6, so that does look very, very good. How optimistic are you to uh, do a really good race here in Moscow? Well, I mean, as you said, the starting uh, positions aren't too bad. Have the front row and three more cars in the top ten is not a bad starting point, but we all know it's going to be a tough and tight race. Temperature's fantastic, crowd is fantastic, so everything is set. So now the 23 guys just have to have to execute and give the fans a good show and we'll see what the result is going to be. Let's take a last look at the grid with our starting grid animation. The drivers starting on the quicker option tyres are marked in yellow. Although these tyres may only be used for a total of 49% of the race distance before a mandatory switch to standard rubber. From pole, Maxime Martin with Bruno Spengler alongside. Then we see Nico Muller and Mike Rockefeller. Adrian Tombe and Augusto Farfus P5 and P6. Then we see Marco Wittmann P7, the championship leader, with Miguel Molina alongside. Jamie Green goes from P9 with the Deutsche Post colours of Timo Glock, P10. Matthias Ekstrom and Eduardo Mortara on the next row of the grid. Then it's Antonio Felix da Costa and Robert Wickens, P14. Danny Juncatella and Joey Hand, P15, P16. Timo Scheider, disappointed, P17, and Paul de Resta alongside him. An all Mercedes row of Pascal Fairline and Gary Paffitz. Then we see Christian Vitoris and Martin Tomczyk. And bringing up the rear with a lot of work to do from P23 on the grid is Vitaly Petrov. So the tension mounts before the start in uh, the BMW, the Mercedes and the Audi garages as the formation lap now comes to an end and all the cars line up on the grid we get ready to go racing when the five lights go out the race starts here we go as they head off towards turn one all the cars safely making their way through the first corner. There's no change in the top positions. Maxime Martin leads from Bruno Spengler. Nico Muller, Mike Rockenfeller and Adrian Tombe. And Tombe now having a look at Mike Rockenfeller. And he's going to go through. This will mean fifth place for Adrian Tombe. Further down the field, though, Mortara and Green collide. On board with Jamie Green, there is Edo Mortara going past the uh, Hankook board. Manages to get it back out on the track. Now here in replay, we can see Danny Juncadella also pushed into a spin. But we're on board with Eduardo Mortara and he tags the back end of Jamie Green's car. That puts Edo Mortara out. It also puts Jamie Green there into a spin. Well, that's going to cause uh, anger, dismay, not only in the garage, I would have thought, but also between the Audi drivers. Let's hear what Edo Mortara has to say. I, I was not breaking. We were still full throttle. And um, what happened is that I was on the inside. Uh, I had better grip with option tyres. 
uh, firstly didn't see me really well I think in turn two so I was on the outside like trying to avoid him running a little bit in the grass on the outside of turn two but uh, you know I was still there and he turned into me in uh, turn three when I was when we were sort of like side by side he was slightly in front and then we collide and I think it's uh, things that can happen during the race. So Eduardo Mortara then says it's a racing incident as uh, we see the championship leader go past Mike Rockenfeller. Marco Fitman then gets up the inside of uh, Mike Rockenfeller. The option tyres offer significantly better performance than the harder compound. And uh, Fitman will not be the last to get the better of Rocky in the first stint. OK, let's take a look at the start once again. Maxime Martin doing everything absolutely right. Nico Muller and uh, Mike Rockefeller very much together from the second row of the grid around turn one. Let's see it from on board with Marco Wittmann. Great on board shots into turn one here. He tucks in behind Augusto Farfus, then gets the uh, drive and the traction up the inside. Brilliant move there. Ekstrom is now on a charge with Mike Rockefeller, and uh, that looked oh so easy. Now we've got Timo Glock right on the back of Augusto Farfus. Here they come then. So Timo Glock and Augusto Farfus side by side. And, well, easy pickings for Timo Glock. On board with Augusto Farfus then. Maxime Martin leads. Then it's Bruno Spengler, Nico Muller. Then Tombe, then Wittmann. Mike Rockefeller and the fast charging Timo Glock. And Timo Glock on the champion now as they head up towards the turn 13 and through goes Timo Glock. Former Formula One star doing a great job here at Moscow. Unfortunately, Jamie Green with the damage sustained with the coming together with Edo Mortara has to retire that car. So a very, very short race for Jamie Green. And here we can see in replay just how that car was crabbing. There was absolutely no way he was even going to be able to nurse it back to the pit lane, let alone uh, continue in the race. We're back with the champion, Mike Rockefeller, who is now being pursued by Christian Vitoris in the Mercedes. And Christian Vitoris up the inside then after the straight, the leads to turn 13. Easy pickings was Mike Rockefeller for Christian Vitoris. So with DRS and the option tyres, that is what has made the difference. Let's see it in replay then. Christian Vitoris deploys the rear wing DRS. You saw it flapping up then when he'd completed the move with the DRS. Brilliant. Earning praise from the Mercedes team in the garage. Let's hear what Christian has to say about it. The performance we had was was, was strong. I was um, really happy with the performance. Um, I personally, so I was pushing flat out more or less like in qualifying. Um, the team did a good job. We had a very good uh, car balance, um, so I was yeah I was happy. I think we are heading in the right direction. Well, heading in the wrong direction, regrettably, is fellow Mercedes driver Paul De Resta. He retires with a broken gearbox. So the leading group then led by Maxime Martin. Then it is Bruno Spengler. Then we see Nico Muller and the hard-charging Adrian Tombe. This is Martin Tomczyk on Augusto Farfus to take 10th place. And from on board Augusto Farfus's car looked oh so easy for Tomczyk. Marco Wittmann we're on board with now as Adrian Tombe passes Nico Muller to take third place. Can Marco Wittmann go through as well? We're on board with him. But to be fair, Wittmann is uh, under pressure from Ekstrom. And Ekstrom has got past Wittmann, and now it is Matthias Ekstrom that is uh, charging against Nico Muller. Adrian Tombe is up the road. Well, Marco Wittmann was the loser in that little battle, to be honest. We go back on board with Marco Wittmann as Ekstrom goes through, and now too, so does Wittmann. Nico Muller going back, and Nico Muller is under pressure from the Deutsche Post BMW now of Timo Glock. There was a little bit of a nudge there, as Timo says, I'm going to try and come through here. Get another great shot 
And uh, Timo Glock doing everything he can. He's going to go up the inside here. Surely there's a bit of panel rubbing between Muller and Timo Glock. Indeed, there is. Muller is pushed out. This is the long run up the straight towards turn 13. Muller tries to fight back, but Timo Glock in a perhaps unorthodox place for an overtake move made it happen. And this is how close they got. This is fantastic stuff from DTM here at the Moscow Raceway. And this is where Timo Glock pulled off that move. Nico Muller, to be fair, left the door open and Timo Glock said, thank you very much, I'll have some of that. Here is our race leader, Maxime Martin. What a drive the Belgian is having here as he now heads up the long drag towards uh, turn 13. And the gap between Martin and Mike Rockefeller, you could see on screen there. There is uh, Bruno Spengler. Then it's Adrian Tombe and the fast-moving Matthias Ekstrom with Marco Wittmann and the Deutsche Post colours of uh, Timo Glock in the BMW. This is Nico Muller and Christian Vitoris uh, going through. Now, no grip at all for Nico Muller on his uh, front axle. His option tyres have degraded very fast. Vitoris is now seventh. Directly behind them, Martin Tomczyk passes Mike Rockenfeller then for P9. And this in replay is how Vitoris managed to get past without too much resistance from Nico Muller. And there too, Tomczyk on Mike Rockenfeller. On board the Marco Wittmann car, looking back at Timo Glock. And Glock dives up the inside of uh, Marco Wittmann and he will go fifth. All Wittmann can see in his windscreen now is the yellow car of Timo Glock, which was in his rearview mirror. Timo Glock then with a good move on Marco Wittmann, the championship leader going into this round here. The first to pit is going to be Nico Muller. He will make his uh, mandatory uh, pit stop and he'll be going on to the hard tyres. Meantime, Antonio Felix da Costa passing the Norris Ring winner, Robert Wickens, who's having a difficult race and is stuck in uh, P15. Edo Mortara making his way past Augusto Farfus now as the option tyres prove superior to the standard rubber yet again. The championship leader, Marco Wittmann, makes his stop now. We're on board with him. Switching to the harder compound. The rest staying out as long as they can. Wittmann on his way out of the pit lane right now. Here, the Mercedes man, Pascal Verlein, is quicker on his option tyres than Mike Rockefeller. The man from Swabia is trying to make up for a poor qualifying performance. This is Pascal Verlein on Martin Tomczyk. And he goes towards the outside and will take him around the outside on turn one, or will he? Very close between Pascal Verlein and Martin Tomczyk. There's just a little bit of a touch there, but Pascal Verlein keeps absolutely committed to it. Is he going to be able to do it around turn one? Yes, he is. So Pascal Verlein does get past Martin Tomczyk. Mike Rockefeller sits right behind the pair of them. This in slow-mo then. Oh, yes, some nerfing together there between Martin Tomczyk and Pascal Verlein pushed out. And in fairness, if there's any uh, track limits issues there, well, it wasn't really Pascal Verlein's fault. He was uh, pushed right outside. This is Matthias Ekstrom then, and he is the first of the leading group into the pits. Team working very, very hard on the Ekstrom car. You can see the uh, pit stop time there on the screen. Also coming in, I think that was uh, Pascal Verlein. Yes, it is. Uh, Pascal Verlein coming in as well. So too, Tomczyk. And I think that was Edo Moltara. Now, Ekstrom rejoins marginally ahead of Augusto Farfus, who's still on standard tyres. So, Matthias Ekstrom back out on track again after his mandatory pit stop. Out goes a fair line. There goes Tomczyk and there goes Edo Mortara all back out onto track. Timo Scheider with a problem. Timo Scheider's season. Oh my goodness me, now he's parked up right on the start finish straight here. And there's smoke coming from the front of Timo Scheider's car. 
Maxime Martin then is in the pits. Now this could bring out a safety car because of the position of Timo Scheider's car. Now it's off the racing line, but it is on the start finish straight. So Maxime Martin managed to get in. So too, here comes Bruno Spengler. Maxime Martin back out again. And the uh, safety car symbol at the top of your screen, you can see now Maxime Martin and Bruno Spengler were in just in time. Here is the safety car being deployed. So uh, Timo Glock, another one of those that reached the pit lane just in time. Uh, so too Christian Vitoris, just before the uh, safety car was deployed. And Vitoris uh, back out onto track again. So all the cars then behind the uh, safety car now. Mike Rockenfeller is the man that didn't make it in to the uh, pit lane before the safety car. Very hard to say whether the tactic of driving the second half of the race on option tyres will now pay off. At least the field now closes up. Fundamentally a good thing for the defending champion, but his team principal, Ernst Moser, we saw there, looks doubtful. The headache caused by uh, Scheider's A5 then as they managed to get it back in through that gate. Timo Scheider then having a discussion with his engineer on the uh, pit perch. Wonder what the problem is, fuel line perhaps? That's clearly being discussed at the moment. Well, whatever it was, I don't think it was the coming together with uh, Robert Wickens that caused the problem. Let's see that in slow-mo. Here's Robert Wickens. Here is Timo Scheider arriving on the scene and losing one of the fins as well. Let's hear from Timo now. Timo, there was smoke in the front of your car coming out. What was the problem? What happened? Did it have to do with the uh, uh, incident with uh, Wickens? Well, um, it was uh, at a certain point breaking to the last half and just no engine power left. So um, I don't know what happened exactly, so we have to check the car, but suddenly the engine switched off and I uh, had to stop the car. OK, well, with the safety car in, all the hard work that Maxime Martin had done has got to be redone. The cars tightly bunched, Rockefeller and Farfus basically have a very good chance now of moving up through the field. For the time being, Maxime Martin, though, leads from Bruno Spengler. Rockefeller looking very, very racy now. Too racy, in fact. There's a coming together with Adrian Tombe. A total catastrophe for Rockefeller, his team, and also for Audi. My goodness me, it looked like Rocky just locked up and got into uh, Adrian Tombe. And the safety car is being deployed once again. Now, taking a look on the slow-mo there, there is no question that uh, Rocky was in the uh, wrong, seemed to lock up, got into Tombe, and the damage was caused by the uh, spin that Tombe was put into by the reigning champion. And Ernst Moser and Audi not very, very happy about that at all. Let's hear from Verena Wright down in the pit lane with Ernst Moser. What a catastrophe we just saw between Tom Bay and Rocky. What was the problem? Were Rocky's suspensions not warm enough? Or what exactly was the problem? How do you explain it? I really, I don't know what, why, why he had an accident uh, for the restart. I, he was, I think he wasn't really concentrated because uh, he was uh, for the safety car and at the pit stops. He always asked what happened, where we are. And I think this was uh, the main reason. I think yeah, the tire was warm, so we will see what happened after. Yeah, it was working out really, really well for Rocky. After all, he won here last year, and we just saw him lying on the floor, absolutely devastated. I guess that is absolutely understandable. Yeah, the first, the first half of the race was really good. We were really in the pace, and uh, the strategy looks fine. And I, I think if we can do the second half with option tire, we are really, really in a, a really good position on the podium. So. That's, that's it now, we have zero points and let's see what happens in the next race. Well, two Audis out. Adrian Tombe and Mike Rockefeller. And we can see Mike there, well, brought down to an earth with a crash. And there is his car. And Mike certainly knows that he was to blame and he's not happy about the situation at all ruining his race and that of Adrian Tombe too. What's he got to say? On the restart, I, I just brake a bit late, I think. Uh, the tires were too cold. I made a mistake. I, I turned around Adrian and therefore, um, yeah, I destroyed his race and my race. Uh, that's that's really 
was not my intention because I just tried to follow him uh, because I had to come in for the mandatory pit stop anyway one lap later and therefore it's even worse you know when you try to fight and you try to overtake things can go wrong but like this is pretty pretty annoying well, the safety car stayed out for five laps. That's obviously a disaster for drivers like Augusto Farfos and Miguel Molina, who were on the alternative strategy of driving the second half of the race on the faster tyres, because the race will definitely not run the full distance. Instead, the chequered flag will come out at the end of the stipulated 75 minutes. It means less time to play catch up and the option tyres are not even on the car yet. No problems with the restart though. Martin leading from Spengler, Glock, Ekstrom and Farfus. Fafus and uh, Molina both come in to switch to the option tyres. Antonio Felix da Costa, Wickens and Juncatella also going to come in for new rubber. Fafus is going to be some 30 seconds behind the leader, Maxime Martin. On paper, there's no way he can make up that kind of gap in the time remaining. Let's go on board with him. Augusto Fafus then, he's the one with an awful lot of work to do. But I rather think the charge is going to be too much. Joey Hand also in. So too Vitaly Petrov. And there is uh, Gary Paffett, the Mercedes Warhorse. 2005 champion will uh, finish 16th. And despite support from the home crowd, the breakthrough still proves elusive for Vitaly Petrov who will come home in 18th place. A good day, though, for BMW. Maxime Martin still incredibly quick, even on the standard tyres, with Spengler and Glock also looking good for the podium. However, one man that could spoil that at the moment is Matthias Ekstrom. And there we see the uh, back end of Ekstrom's car as he makes the run now up towards turn one here. In shot, Marco Wittmann. Let's go on board with him. He is the championship leader and appears to have a solid grip on fifth place. Miguel Molina now darts to the outside of Martin Tomczyk. There is Augusto Farfus, the man who is having to work so, so very hard. And Molina goes through. Farfus makes his way past Martin Tomczyk. This in replay, and Miguel Molina going to have a go at that point as well. Let's see it on board uh, from Augusto Farfus. And now Molina is really having a go at uh, Augusto Farfus. Quite a roughhouse attack, but the Brazilian's defence is much stronger and more successful than his national football teams. In the meantime, Felix da Costa suddenly gets alongside Molina. He's going to squeeze his way down the inside. Molina out. And he slips back to 12th place. And Augusto Farfus sees off the challenge. Matthias Ekstrom and Marco Wittmann have got past to Timo Glock. Let's see that again in slow-mo to see how that overtake happened. Up the inside goes Matthias Ekstrom. Timo Glock just once tried to shut the door, realised he couldn't do it. Now, Marco Wittmann, watching all that going on, took advantage of the better traction he had out of turn 13, was able to get right alongside Timo Glock and just outdrive him around the outside. We're on board with Marco Wittmann. A fine move by him. Meantime, further down the pack, Miguel Molina desperately trying to uh, get past Antonio Felix da Costa. Some heavy defending there from Antonio Felix da Costa. And he holds that uh, charging Molina car at bay. Here comes our race leader, Maxime Martin, then. With just uh, 40 seconds left to run in this race, he is P1 and potentially could make DTM history. Bruno Spengler, P2. Here's Matthias Ekstrom for P3. Now, Wittmann looks unlikely to get near enough to Ekstrom to be able to activate his DRS. And as the clock ticks down, as you can see at the top of your screen, Maxime Martin is about to make history.
He is but one turn away of completing his maiden DTM victory. Here comes the Belgian. He rounds turn 13 to head towards the chequered flag and Maxime Martin wins in Russia. Bruno Spengler takes P2. For P3, it's going to be Matthias Ekstrom, despite that late charge from Marco Wittmann. Then it's Nico Muller, Timo Glock, Christian Vitoris for Mercedes, then Pascal Verlein for Mercedes as they hustle across the line. Absolutely brilliant DTM racing. What a race. Mr. Marquardt, congratulations. One, two, four, and six. Absolutely amazing. What do you say about your young Belgian man? Well, I've, I'm really impressed. I'm deeply impressed. I mean, this weekend has been really special here for him, and he just didn't do anything wrong. And just like Marco did a few times this year, looks like those young guys, they just don't have any nerves at all. They just drive away, and that's it. And I'm really impressed. But Bruno behind did a great job. Sorry for, for Timo. He fought hard, but had a bit of a problem at the end, technically. And uh, yeah, but Marco was there, so scored big points for BMW, which was important to do here. And, and really a great show for the, for the fans as well. So very good race. Thank you, Jens Marquardt. And here we can see that Augusto Farfus, uh, despite having the advantage of the option tyres, well, he was to remain stuck behind Eduardo Mortara, despite the most valiant effort from the Brazilian. I think the strategy was, was very, was okay, I would say. But the two safety cars just kill our hopes. Unfortunately, there was not a lot to do. Uh, and then we had a second safety car, so it actually made our situation even worse. But nevertheless, I think we tried our best. The car was okay, and that's what counts. Christian Vitoris and Pascal Verlein in seventh and eighth are the best of the Mercedes, a long way off the podium. For third place, Matthias Ekstrom. There is more reason to be pleased, although Audi are still waiting for their first win in the DTM this year. Here's a man who fought like crazy, Matthias Ekstrom. Congratulations for your third place. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a, night, uh, a great race. I mean, I had uh, a lot of action in front of me with uh, cars crashing and so on, and I had some cool overtaking maneuvers. So actually, it was a good race. The uh, car was working uh, pretty decent, so I'm just happy driving around. Congratulations. Great uh, race for you, and now I guess you've got to go. So. <laughs> Yes, Ekstrom is required immediately for the podium because the winning duo of uh, Maxime Martin and Bruno Spengler were already waiting. So trophy presentation made to a very happy history-making Maxime Martin who is uh, congratulated and applauded by the uh, boss of BMW Motorsport, uh, Mr. Jens Marquardt. And you can see just how happy the team are down there for Maxime Martin. Matthias Ekstrom receives his trophy. Bruno Spengler has already got his. OK, the hard-working Verena Wright catches up with all three of them now. I'm here with all three, and just one thing's got to be mentioned. Matthias' trophy just broke, but we heard glass is a lot of luck, so that's for the future. But first of all, Maxime, you did a phenomenal job. Your first pole yesterday and now your first victory. I mean, you've just got to be absolutely thrilled. Yeah, it's uh, just unbelievable. I'm... Uh I'm still not realizing. Um, it's just amazing. It's my fifth race, and uh, one pole, one victory. It's just, it's just great, and I have no words. And uh, yeah, thank you, BMW. Thank you, the team. Thank you. And one man who also fought so incredibly hard is Bruno Spengler. Second place, congratulations. You're smiling. You're happy. Yeah, I'm happy. It was a good weekend. You know, we started a bit difficult in free practice yesterday. Struggled to find the right setup. Um, you know, Maxim was very quick today and uh, he did an amazing job. Congratulations to him. Really great race. Uh, he just make no mistakes and he was quick. So, um, you know, we have to carry on working, but it's great points for BMW. You know, it's really good one and two. I think Marco is P4, so that's also pretty good. Uh, in general, for us, it's good, even though the safety cars and all this, you know, it could have gone completely wrong, but uh, we made it. So I'm very happy. Thank you to my team Schnitzer and to BMW Motorsports. It's a great day for us. OK, let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship and Marco Wittmann then still at the very top on 70 points. Then it's Matthias Ekstrom on 50 and Bruno Spengler P3 on 41. So as we head towards Austria and the Red Bull ring, Marco Wittmann still very much the man to beat. Well, actually, it was a, it was a good race, um, especially tough at the beginning. It was a fight with the Audis. Um, they were really uh, on it um, and didn't really care if they can push me out or not. 
Um, so it was not easy to, to stay as a car without any damages, um, but finally we were able to do this and to manage it. And at the end, from P7 to P4, it's a good result. Also for my teammate here, Maxim, who won, uh, a great result for the team RMG and overall with BMW, um, uh, with Bruno on P2, it, it's a great result, a good weekend, and um, I think we can be happy today. And now I'm here with Norbert Haug. Norbert, a really exciting race, so much happened in the race, but would you have thought that we, in the end we'd have actually the double victory for BMW? Yeah, well, first of all, we need to mention Maxime Matin. I mean, he was uh, very convincing with his pole position yesterday, but between pole and winning a race is a, is a, is a huge, huge step, and he did it perfectly. I mean, uh, this is 50 DM race, and I think there's probably a new record. I, I'm not sure, but maybe nobody else before one, one earlier. Well, I think Mika Ekin comes in my mind, was the third one, or Jean Lazy. But, I mean, they are great guys who won uh, the first uh, one of the first five uh, races. This is very, very remarkable. BMW was strong. I mean, the safety car played a role, which was a shame. I mean, we, we could have had an even better race without the safety car. But, I mean, it was right to apply the safety car, so I mean, kill a bit. Also, of course, Matthias Ekstrom, uh, he really fought hard. And we have Marco Wittmann in fourth place, who's just collecting points and points. What do you say now we're halfway through the season? What do you say if you're looking into the future, into the second half? Well, Wittmann is also one of the young guns, and uh, he's, uh, as you said, he's collecting points. And I mean, if you cannot win, then you need to be third, second, fourth, whatever. And he, w he was fourth today in a strong race, coming from seventh or whatever, collected good points at the uh, Norris ring in a difficult race. This is what you should do if you want to become a uh, champion at the end of the year. So he's in a very good position, but nothing is for granted. I mean, the other guys, Ekstrom, Spengler, uh, they have a lot of experience. Uh, Rockefeller, the reigning champion, did a mistake today, but I'm sure they will come back. It's just half season. Uh, lots of things can still can happen, and it will be interesting until the end, I'm quite sure. And what can we expect for uh, Spielberg? Yeah, this is a uh, this is a different circuit to here. I mean, it's it's lots of acceleration, but a very interesting layout. You need a lot of power, uh, good braking. I think it's only six or seven corners there. But we saw a fantastic race in Formula One uh, not so long ago. Uh, DTM race was very special, always there, and this this will be a, a very very special great event, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Norbert Haug. So see you in Spielberg. That's it from Moscow. Bye.